Now, I'm a self-taught developer with about seven years of experience, and luckily I still get plenty of programming work even in this current down market. But I can imagine if I were learning programming today by myself, I would be a bit more anxious. Questions would come up for me like, what should I learn? Can I still be a self-taught programmer? Do I need to spend $20,000 on a bootcamp even though it, we basically won't guarantee a job? Should I do AI or Web3 or Web2? Which niche should I pick? Now I'm a self-taught programmer and it was not easy at all. I made lots of mistakes. Now if I had to start over to learn to program basically in 2023, this is what I would personally do. To provide some context, in the past I worked for companies and projects like McKinsey, Peloton, and I built apps for small startups and large Fortune 100 companies. Now my first job I was making $72,000 a month and that quickly jumped into six figures after my first year. Now currently in 2022 and 2023, I do a fair amount of freelancing, get good work, a good hourly rate, and because I do my job well, I have been remote for the last four years. For example, 2017, I was working from Southeast Asia in Bali, then I went to Europe and other places, then I moved back to New York for two years during the peak pandemic, I don't know why, but now I'm in beautiful Mexico City. So I don't have a flashy Facebook or Google job on my resume, but I've been making good money, basically six figures for a while, and I've been able to work remotely, which a lot of people from the top tech companies still cannot do. Now, I'm not mentioning these things to brag. Uh, basically, if learning skills, a good salary, and remote flexibility are appealing to you, then follow along. If you want to get a job basically at Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, or companies uh, like that, then I'm sure there are other videos uh, that provide more specific advice on that. Now, I will tell you some of my humble beginnings and provide all the tips and mistakes. And trust me, I won't give you bullshit advice to try to sell you some course at the end. The thing to keep in mind is that it definitely didn't feel easy when I was learning to program back in 2014 or 2015, and my path was not straightforward at all. Now, there are YouTube videos where people said that they got a job in three months or six months after learning to program, and those can be inspiring, but they also set unrealistic expectations for most people. And if we don't achieve that, then we feel like a complete failure, which I felt like a lot sometimes. Like, why is it taking me so long to figure out these concepts? So what I recommend is working hard and being patient with yourself. Now, if you're a genius like Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk, that's great. But for the rest of us, things take a lot of time, effort, and patience. Now, I personally finished college and ended up doing boring Excel and PowerPoint work as an analyst back in 2012 at JP Morgan. People are generally nice, and I thought I would tough it out, but after three years, I realized I can do a regular cubicle job and I wanted to challenge myself, and I thought programming was the path. So at 24, I decided to go all in, and because I still had college loans, about $20,000 at the time, I didn't want to take on more debt with the bootcamp, and so I started to program on nights and weekends by myself. I probably spent maybe $50, $100 a month uh, basically for online coding resources at that point. For next year, I barely hang out with my friends and I was just learning to code. I got my first job after a year and I was getting paid $72,000 uh, at the time. And then I quickly jumped the salary ladder to 90, to 110, 120, 144, and $165,000. And now that I freelance, I make more than that on an hourly basis. Sometimes I work 20 hours a week, sometimes 50 or 60, it really depends. That first year of learning to program was most challenging for sure. And now at the time I learned PHP, C Sharp, and JavaScript. Now those first two languages were kind of a mistake for me personally. Basically don't learn multiple languages at once if you're a complete beginner. It's like learning Spanish and Portuguese at once or salsa and bachata if you have no prior experience in foreign languages or dancing. Commit to one language for at least six months and get comfortable with it. I learned C Sharp and PHP on top of JavaScript because that's what my friend was using at the time. But after four to five months of learning PHP, I went through interviews and it was hard to compete with PHP developers at the time that had five or seven years of job experience. So I pivoted and focused solely on JavaScript for the next six months. Which brings me to the first question, which language to learn in 2023? Now there are lots of options depending on what you want. Lots of other videos cover this, but basically I think if you're focused on web-based programming or Web3, then go for JavaScript. If you're thinking of dealing with more data, data science, AI, then go for Python. Now both of these are easy to get started with. And don't worry, if you change your mind, the skills you learn from one language will be directly applicable to the other programming languages. With JavaScript, it's basically the most popular language and you can do front-end with React, back-end with Node.js, and on top of that, um, Basically with JavaScript, after the first months, you can start using TypeScript, which is very similar to JavaScript, 
but as extra type safety checks. Typically the easiest job to get is a relative newbie. Programmer is front end engineering. So learning JavaScript and markup languages, HTML and CSS is useful for that. Now on top of that, if you're interested in doing crypto and Web3, learning smart contract languages like Solidity is possible, but people aren't gonna trust a complete newbie programmer with smart contracts where there's basically zero room for errors. Front end JavaScript work, on the other hand, is a lot more lower stakes and it's easy for me to contribute value right away as a complete beginner. Now with backend programming, it's a bit more complicated. You have to make more permanent decisions around how you store data, security, and uh, basically when you have a few years of experience, you can think ahead of certain issues, which is difficult to do as a beginner. Now my first job was doing front end and I really enjoyed it. Again, this is my personal opinion. I do know of other people that got the first job and other languages are doing backend, but the point of this video is to give specific actionable advice that is more subjective to my personal experience. Now, if you're a data guy or gal, definitely go for Python. First of all, you can still do web-based programming uh, on the backend on Python, which is super popular, but for machine learning, data science, AI, Python is the most popular, and it's also easy to read and write if you're a beginner. Now, if you can't decide which language to pick, flip a coin and let fate decide, a lot of decisions we make are really random. For example, I decided to do programming because I had a drink with a friend uh, that was a college dropout and he was doing really well for himself. Now, if I decided not to have a drink with him, then maybe I would continue to get my MBA and continue down the corporate path. Who knows? The important thing is to get started now. Now, if you have specific experience or skill set where you think it makes sense to learn another language like Java or C Sharp, use your best judgment. Now, there are lots of resources for learning to program. Now, I prefer engaging video content, so Udemy, Team Treehouse, Coursera, Codecademy, YouTube, and so on are awesome resources. And new ones are coming on every day. Now, a lot of these cost $10, $20, $30 a month, so experiment a lot here and find the teachers and resources that work best for you. Programming taught me not only how to code, but also how to learn. For example, you can do bootcamp if you have the means and don't think you can stick to rigorous programming for the next year or two. I pay for courses sometimes when I think I need accountability and I have the money to spend. Resources like born technical books did not work for me personally, but they could work for you. Also, when learning new complicated skill, you want to make sure that your head is fresh. So, as I realized in my first year of programming that it was easier to practice and learn to code early in the morning instead of 8 or 9 p.m. at night, when my brain was already fried. So, if you're feeling like your brain doesn't work, don't try to force a solving uh, like some algorithm problem. Go get some sleep and wake up early and try again. And I guarantee it will help a lot with mental health. Now, the key here is getting mental rest with sleep and not binging on YouTube or Netflix late at night because then your brain will just be fried in the morning anyway. Now, this took me a few months to realize, so hopefully you can learn from that. Also, I coded on weekends and realized that being hungover, I could not learn new complex skills. So I cut down on alcohol a lot. So if you find yourself you're not able to focus, try cutting down on beers and food heavy with white carbohydrates like pizza and rice. Those put me in a food coma. Now, another important concept is motivation. Learning to program by yourself is not easy at all. And there are days and weeks where I did not want to feel like programming at all. And I felt like I was stuck. I felt dumb and I wasn't progressing. So I set a big goal. I wanted to have great career in tech and I want to make good money, good perks, freedom to be remote, have good skills and start my own side hustle at startups if I wanted to. And just as importantly, my downside was going to be that if I didn't succeed, I was going to continue to have to wear a suit and a tie, do boring risk management work with Excel and PowerPoint for the next 20 years at a corporate job. So that's a big upside and a big downside if I didn't learn how to program. And that kept me focused on those nights and weekends where my friends were having a good time. Now, what is that motivation for you? I think you should write it down and uh, keep that in mind. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that you need experience to get hired. The truth is that no employer will want to hire you with no experience. So it's a chicken and egg problem, right? And uh, maybe if you had a four year degree in computer science from Waterloo or Stanford or another fancy college, that may be different, but we're basically self-taught engineers. We need to figure it out on our own. Now, I was working in finance for the first three years at the time when I started, and it's kind of completely unrelated feel, and I couldn't use that as programming experience. At the time, two of my friends were running businesses on WordPress and Shopify, and I basically helped them for six months with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
Also, I had my own site hustle uh, back then. I had a content site that I was doing similar stuff to BuzzFeed with attention grabbing headlines, content, and making money of the ad impressions on my site. Nothing special, but I was able to put that I'm a founder of this thing. I contributed for my friends' projects, and that showed that I had at least some experience for one year and that I had initiative. It made me stand out from other bootcamp graduates and self-taught engineers that had empty looking resumes. Now, if you don't have friends that you can help with tech stuff, go in indiehackers.com or producthunt.com and look for inspirations on what other people are creating and build projects by yourself or reach out to maybe to these indie hackers and help them out. You don't need to write a Spotify from scratch. You can use a mix of low code solutions as well like WordPress and Shopify and build in integrations and code on top of them for your MVP. You can create your own side hustle project with a friend or two or by yourself and you can say that you're a co-founder of this product, maybe you got a few customers, and that would be really impressive. And who knows, maybe you won't even need to work for somebody. You can start your own side hustle and be an indie hacker, which is super cool. As a side note, look at Peter Levels for inspiration as somebody that started side hustles that can be started in a couple of weeks. He did a challenge of 12 projects in 12 months and built a few awesome side hustles and is quite popular on Twitter right now. Now you can also contribute to open source work and make some analytics tool for analyzing your favorite hobby, whether it's sports or some Web3 protocol and so on. Now I know some friends got hired with uh, these kinds of projects. On top of that, make friends online and in person with other tech people and learn from them. You can go and meet up the common, and find local groups Basically having a strong support network in the field that you're interested in is very important. And some of those people may refer you to your first job. Also another side note, I've recently watched a clip from Andre Karpathy, who's the OG of machine learning engineering. And he's basically built a team behind Tesla AI and he recently got hired to lead a team behind ChatGTP. What he says is that as a beginner, we all are gonna make mistakes. And when we learn, we're gonna acquire scar tissue from that. He is a big believer in putting 10,000 hours to become great at something if you really want it, and I tend to agree. Now on to interview prep. Now I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna suck. Your first two interviews, you're gonna bomb most likely, so get comfortable with that. When an interview asks you for a question you don't know, just remember it, study it, write it down, and next time you will know the answer. Also, analyze yourself. If you're not getting into interviews, that means that you need to beef up your resume with more relevant skills and experience. If you're getting interviews but you're not getting offers, that means you need to study more, be more knowledgeable, present yourself better. Now, I'm not gonna go over algorithm and interview questions and all that. There are lots of videos that cover that in great detail and it just really depends on the job that you're applying for. Now, you will notice that a lot of the tools I'm talking about um, when being a self-taught engineer is actually about mindset, work ethic, patience, iterating on your learning journey, figuring out creative ways to stand out without paying gatekeepers like colleges for your degrees. Now getting a job in 2023 is definitely harder, but if you have a few months of interesting projects that you worked on in your, on your resume, basically if you take your interview prep seriously and you don't get discouraged when you get rejected and continuously improve and outwork others, have confidence in you. Now it took me a year to get my first tech job. It could take you six months or two years. We're all on different paths. So work hard, focus on improving yourself and not comparing yourself to others too much. Now, one final note on being remote is I was doing in-person work for a few years before I went to remote and I felt that learning from others in an in-office experience was a really valuable skill and less lonely. And I thought I grew faster from that. Well, now once I had a few years of experience, I felt like I had the leverage to ask for fully remote opportunities while maintaining a good salary. Now, this was my personal experience and recommendation, but your context may be different depending on where you are in the world. Also, think if you have valuable tech skills, you will continue to be in demand, whether in an up or down market. I hope this was helpful. Now, did I miss anything or do you have a different opinion? Leave a comment. I'm really curious what you think. Now, on this channel, I cover emerging tech content, so like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Have a good day. See ya.